This right here represents about 75% of what we got last weekend at that haul. Time to find out what we got. What's up, y'all? Hey, uh, so last weekend we went up north, uh, northern Michigan, up here somewhere. And we went garage sailing and we went to our favorite place, which is pay what you want. So we're going to tell you about our day a little bit, how it started and what we ended up running into. So our morning started off pretty slow. We were trying to hit up all these garage sales that were supposedly going on up there this that weekend. And we just kept getting miss after miss after miss, nothing going on. We couldn't find the garage sales. It was raining. We think people put, took them down. Just your typical day where you're like, this is going to stink. So finally we just gave up on the signs leading to nowhere and just said, you know what? We know there's a pay what you want. We're going to go there. Let's get that done. And this is what we got. Yeah. And it, it's like up in the middle of nowhere. So you don't have any reception. So there's no GPS. So you're following these signs. You're like, well, how many miles am I willing to go before I realize it's not there? And we spent about an hour doing this and, and obviously that's not efficient and it was kind of a drag. So first place we went was the pay what you want. So we're going to show you a couple of hard goods and a couple of, um, I think we got a couple of articles of clothing and then we'll tell you where we got all of this, uh, all the stuff here. So I'll start with a couple of rainbow vacuum parts that we picked up at the pay what you want. We ended up paying $20 for about four boxes of hard goods and clothing. These uh, rainbow vacuum attachments, you're gonna be, you know, you're just looking at a box of parts, basically. It's not really exciting, but this is this is a canister for the SE machine. I've sold this canister brand new for about 200. I know uh, I should be able to get about 50 to 100 dollars in just those parts there. And then I have another canister here, also for the same model, also rainbow parts. Uh, again, about 75 to 100 dollars of value here. So with the uh, with those, when we get those listed and sold, that'll cover everything. Yep. And it's always good for some hard goods. This is a vintage General Electric, um, what do you call this? Just like a skillet. soup pot, skillet, skillet soup pot. And they're also always good for a pressure cooker too. So this one doesn't have the jigger, but that's okay because we've sold them without before. It does reduce the price a little bit, but um, just enough so that they can buy their own replacement jigger. We also got this typewriter there, right? Yeah, so on the way out, I went into this back room that I never really make it to, and I was just looking around. Dean had actually already been through the room, but these two things were on the very bottom shelf of something, so he probably just didn't we see it. We got the Brother, and then we got the Smith Corona. We've sold a lot of these Smith Coronas. This one actually came with a bunch of attachments and ribbon. Yeah, lots of great. extras, so that kind of helped up the price for it. And did, then, you, did you already list the brother or do you have a price in mind? Yep, we actually already listed it for uh, $100 free shipping nice. because of all the extras. So, and then this brother is actually a portable, like a laptop typewriter. I've never seen anything like that before and they sell for um, about $60. All right, yeah, so those are kind of the hard goods. Um, after we filled up our car, and again, this, that's just a, those are just the highlights of the hard goods. We did get a few more items there. Yeah, talk about your, your uh, jacket. Oh, yeah. That's probably, that was yeah, this is there. kind of yeah. a highlight. <laughs> um, so we got to know the lady that runs the organization. It's actually a um, donation-based thrift store that helps women that are in a tough spot. So they actually have housing. They provide free furniture, training, etc. So it was really nice to actually see what our money goes to. Yeah. When I talked to her, she actually uh, said, hey, look, there's some stuff that we haven't processed yet. You might be interested to take a look. So I saw a box that uh, had, it was labeled men's clothing and it was still sealed as a donation box. And I pulled out this jean jacket. It's a Levi made in USA jean jacket. Uh, we'll definitely be yeah. featuring this in our story sale. Um, it's not big E. For all of you wondering just yeah it's, a little, it's worth about 50 bucks yep. um, but again you know great great condition it has just the right amount of wear on it um, and I found a couple more articles of clothing a couple sweaters you know not nothing nothing crazy yeah we also got a uh, small revere wear pop there and we also found a Sony CD changer we actually ended up leaving that up north at our cottage 
uh, just to be we only had a single CD player up there and it's just nice to have not get up all the time and change the music yeah nothing uh, better than uh, free electronics yeah and again we paid twenty dollars for all of it so after uh, we finished with the pay what you want we saw uh, a couple of garage sale signs actually on the way there and we said we'll hit them up on our way back so on our way back we found one garage sale um, it was like you know half a mile this way which was a good indication that we're not going to be lost for a while mm -hmm. we went to it we pulled up and there was a bunch of stuff laid out and then a huge pole barn and i walked in and i started looking there was a huge rack every there's so many articles of clothing it was actually organized by like department and size and the guy said all the shirts are a dime and literally in my head, I was like, what's a dime? Like, who says that? Like, is that five cents, 10 cents? The first shirt- It's I, 10 cents. It's 10 cents. The first t-shirt that I pull out is this made in USA Mickey shirt. And I was like, okay, this is gonna be a good time here. So we'll show you some of the highlights there. Yep. Uh, what we picked up. Obviously we're not gonna go through all this. There's like 150 articles of clothing. It will be a three hour video. So let's get right into it. Yeah, some of my personal faves were the vintage sweaters. They're just in such good condition and I'm just such a sucker for these old sweaters. Um, just really cool patterns I'll up here and show you. Good colors. I mean, no holes, no tears. This one? Oh yeah. This one, it's got like leather striping on it. Oh, it's so sweet. And some of these are made in Hong Kong, some are in Singapore, some in Korea. This um, one is USA. Yep, but yeah. nothing made in China. So yeah, this is like the authentic. old school and you can just, you can feel the quality on that, those older sweaters for sure. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to show off this one. It has reindeer. <laughs> How cool is that? Yeah, so then we found a bunch of these like uh, Budweiser, like this one is a Bud. This one's a 2000 and it's just a 2000. It does have some staining that we couldn't get out of it, but it does have the Budweiser on the collar. Yeah, so up by my cottage, they every year they have something called Bud Fest. Yeah. Um, basically everybody just goes out on their pontoons and drinks Budweiser, except for us, but there's a lot of good like bud gear up there yeah here's another one that's budweiser it's vintage made in usa with the stressing of the collar um harley davidson yeah, we found a uh, couple harley. pieces from harley this is a 2001 sweater um uh, some, also some like this is a 1988 michigan state bowl game sweatshirt um it does have some staining on it but otherwise really good condition. Uh, 1994 Coca-Cola bear shirt. This is when they first started using the bears um, around that time. So that was a pretty sweet find. I kind of scooped in and picked this up before Dean got to it. We got this golf tee as well. This is a made in USA best, um, best fruit of the loom tag. Really sweet graphic up front, um, a single stitch shirt clean, no stains, uh, probably one of the better ones for sure. And then there's a couple location shirts. These are single stitch, uh, I'll move up here. This one's Chicago. And there's an also a super sweet, this is embroidered. Um, this is Alaska, if you can't see it there. So very cool. Definitely a few uh, religious t-shirts as well. This one is a Jesus Christ shirt, uh, vintage, uh, single sh single stitch, USA. This one is a 1995 Mackinac Bridge. This is a bridge that connects the lower and upper peninsula of Michigan. Just like those sweet, uh, sweet 90s colors on this one. Uh, another single stitch. And then we also found some pretty sweet, like old, ugly sweat Christmas sweaters. I mean, come on. Found this like Snowbird Utah long sleeve tee. I mean, there's just so much stuff in here. Yeah, just crazy. This is like a fishing shirt, single stitch, just lots of little, what do they call these, Adeen? Hooks? Hooks? Uh, like and bob bobbles, bob boggers, mm -hmm. I don't know. The things you catch the fish with. Yeah, flies, I don't know. 
1998 Detroit um, Red Wings Championship t-shirt. Then we have um, these silk jackets were so sweet. This is just a plain silk jacket. Uh, nothing on it, no embroidery. It is a uh, made in USA extra large. Yeah, so then we found these uh, vintage Detroit Lions with the old logo. I think this was from 1967 until 19... 1961 until 1970 or something like that. One is just like a slightly more silkier than the other. Uh, just awesome pieces, like such rare pieces. I'll, sh I'll, get a, gem. I'll hold this one. You can talk about it. I mean, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. So obviously, as you can see, it's sweet. It's got the Michigan all the way across. It's vintage from like the 80s, maybe early 90s. And there was a couple looking at this in the barn and Adine was kind of standing there and they were debating it. Oh no, I think it's too big for me. And Adine's just hoping like, leave it, leave it. Please leave it. <laughs> and they did. And this thing sells um, for like 125. Yeah, it's so rare. Like, they, it's so rare to find, but there's like, it's mint. Like there's no staining. It, it's it's probably been worn once. Um, yeah, just, just amazing graphics on it. Also found this uh, University of Michigan. Oh, I'm sorry, Michigan this is Michigan State. State. Um, it's like also, a waffle mint. Yeah, also a sweet, uh, just a single, you know, patch up front, made in Hong Kong, uh, medium sized. Uh, yeah, just an awesome sweet, sweet piece. And this is a pretty sweet Western shirt. I gotta. I mean, how cool is that? Then we have this Mighty Ducks. Uh, this one actually already sold through Instagram. There was an interested party. Um, this one sold already. It's just a vintage Mighty Ducks uh, hockey style jersey. These are pretty sweet. Monda found these two. This is a matching set. Um, I'm not sure what it's made out of. It's The tag is Cool Cash. Cool Cash, made in USA. Uh, and these are pieces I picked up just because, I mean, they just have that really cool vintage style to them. And they're a set and they're in just pristine condition. What else? What else? Another Christmas sweater, like the, just the old vintage ugly sweater. Yeah, uh, and then I actually also picked up um, a cranberry Teflon saute pan in great condition uh, and an amber Teflon pot as well from that. So I, I think he asked for a dollar for those, you know, big money, big yeah. money. We broke the bank. So when he got everything put into bags, it ended up being three large trash bags and a box. And he did the math and it was $24. I offered to pay 40, we settled on 30. They knew we were resellers, but they were giving us such a great deal. I mean, this Michigan piece, we paid 25 cents for it. It's worth over a hundred dollars. So. Yeah, this is, I think, the second wildest experience we've had picking so far. The first one, we weren't making videos back then, was a hoarder house we went through where we found over $3,000 for $170. Uh, that was the wildest, but this is definitely a, a close second. Yeah, so those are just the highlights. There's a lot more uh, just working on getting it processed and up and listed, and we're also planning on running a story sale on some stuff, so. For sure. Right so. Yeah, so anyways, we wanted to show you our crazy haul. Um, we don't specialize in vintage clothing, but we like to be diversified in what we sell because when we run into an opportunity like this, let's say we were strictly electronic sellers, but we'll be leaving top, you know, thousand, fifteen hundred dollars of value sitting there that they only wanted twenty four dollars for. So this is why we do a bit of everything that's valuable. Um, yeah. Yeah. All right. So anyways, thanks for watching. Appreciate you guys. Smash the thumbs up if, uh, if you appreciate this kind of content. Uh, check us out on Instagram. We will be running a sale. Um, I'm going to try my best to get this video up today during the story sale. We'll see. You guys have a great day. Thanks. Bye, everybody.